Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. Health bars indicate the players how much health they have before death. Health should deplete in an obvious manner, because with every hit, a player is closer to losing their life. The display of health also helps to dramatize the near loss of a life. In this video, we'll have a look at how to use the UI elements to build the health bar. First, we will make one simple enemy AI which will patrol between two points. Then, this enemy will shoot to us in a specified condition. We will make one simple projectile game object as prefab. Finally, we will use the UI canvas workspace render mode to complete this episode. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below. You can download the starting project on my Google Drive. Also, all of the tips and assets you can find on my GitHub. Okay, let's get into it. So we have opened up Unity and currently we have something in here. We already have one dungeon environment by using Telemap 2D system. We have prepared one player game object. It has a sprite render component which renders a sprite for 2D graphics. We use animator component to assign animation to our player game object in the scene. Since we will use the rigidbody.velocity in C -sharp script, we have one rigidbody 2D component as well. The body type is dynamic, which is designed to move under simulation. We have set the gravity scale variable to zero so that the player is not affected by gravity. And under constraints, we have set free rotation on the Z or Z axis to true. This will prevent the player game object from rotating in wall space. Also, we added one box collider 2D component to handle physical collisions for our player. Inside player movement script, we need to first get a rigid body 2D component. We have one public float variables called move speed. This controls how fast the character moves. We are capturing import from the import system into two float variables called move edge and move e. Next, we will multiply it by the float variables move speed, which we can control from the inspector. I use rigid body dot velocity quite often. We just setting the velocity equals to the new vector two move edge and move e. And this is our enemy game object with the sprite render and animator component. We have two waypoint game objects in our hierarchy. Our enemy will patrol between these two points. As always, I have created several folders to manage the assets easily. When we press play, we can control our player easily. Additional, our enemy runs the walk animation. Let's create one c -sharp script called enemy. We want our enemy can patrol between these two points. So we have two public transform type variables called waypoint1 and waypoint2. We have another private transform variable that is called waypoint target. The waypoint target will actually track down which waypoint is the enemy target currently. Then we have another private variable that is called move speed. Serialize field is just used for showing a private variable's value on inspector. You can easily change the value like public variable, but no one can access the value from another script or places. At the beginning of the game, we set the waypoint target to waypoint 1. Inside the update function, we want our enemy move towards the target location in each frame. Transform.position is equal to the vector 2 dot move towards. There are three parameters on here. The first parameter is our current position. The second parameter is our target position. The third parameter is the, our move speed multiplied by time dot delta time. If the distance between enemy and the waypoint 1 is less than 0 0.01, which means our enemy has reached at waypoint 1 position our waypoint target should be updated to waypoint 02. Also, if our enemy has reached at the waypoint 02, the waypoint target should be changed to waypoint 01. Bend to Unity and drag the waypoints into the inspector. Set the move speed variable's value to 2. When we are in play mode, our enemy can move between two points. However, it's still not looking very natural yet. We want our enemy can turn his directions when he walk. We quickly declare one sprite render type variable called sp 
and get access the sprite render component inside the star function. If our enemy waypoint target is on the right side, the sprite render dot flip x will turn into true. Otherwise, the sprite render dot flip x should be false. Bend to Unity, when we press play, our enemy looks better. Now we want his enemy has his attack range. When our player inside his range, the enemy can shoot to us. If we are outside of this range, the enemy will continue to patrol between these two points. Bend to enemy script, we have another private variable called attack range. In order to read easily, I create one function called patrol and select all of this group inside this new function. If the distance between enemy and the player is less than the attack range, our enemy start to shoot to the player. So we have to get access the player position. We create another private transform type variable called target. We use find game object with tag to get access the player game object. Don't forget to get component of the transform type as well. The player tags must be declared in tag manager before using it. If the distance between enemy and the player is greater than the attack range, our enemy start to patrol between two points. Otherwise, we leave the blank inside the else statements first. Bend to unity and set the attack range to 5. You will notice that our enemy patrol between two points normally. Once the player inside the enemy's attack range, our enemy will stop and do something later. If we are outside his attack range, our enemy will continue to patrol as well. Cool. Now we start to make the projectile game object. Go to sprites folder, enemy folder, and select all of the projectile sprites inside the hierarchy. Save his animation and animator inside the animation folder. Change his name. Since we have made the tile map before, in order to view the projectile on the screen, we have to change the sorting layer order. We can go to the animation window. If you want to slow down the animation speed, you can change the sample rate on here. Create another C -sharp script called projectile. Since the projectile will follow our player, we have to get access of the player transform component as well. Making sure your player game object has the player tag first. We have another private variable that is called move speed. This variable represents how fast our projectile move to the player. We can also use vector2.move towards to achieve the projectile movement. The first parameter is our projectile current position. The second parameter is the target position. In other words, the second parameter is our player position. The third parameter is move speed dot time dot delta time. We don't want the projectile always follow the player, no matter this projectile touch to our player or not. After two seconds, this projectile shall be destroy himself in the scene. We create one private float variable called life timer. Then we create another private float variable that is called max life and set the value to two. Inside the update function, lifetimer always increase according to the time dot delta time. If the lifetimer is greater than the max life, destroy the game object. Additional, we want to make some visual effects when the projectile destroy himself. I have prepared two visual effects as prefab inside the prefab folder. Inside the projectile script, we have another two game object type variables that is called destroy effect and attack effect. If the life timer is greater than max life, we can say instantiate the destroy effect. Once the projectile touch to the player, we use on trigger enter 2D function. If the object enter the trigger's collider tag as player, we also have to destroy the projectile game object 
and instantiate another visual effect. Bend to Unity, select the projectile game object, add the projectile scrape, drag two prefabs on Inspector. Making sure you have unchecked the loop inside their animation. Also, don't forget to add the Circle Collider 2D component and mark the checkbox is triggered as well because of the untrigger enter 2D. When we press play, our projectile can destroy correctly and instantiate the visual effect prefab. However, the visual effect prefab still exists on the hierarchy. We can simply create one script called destroyer. This object will be destroyed after certain seconds. Select each visual effect prefab, add the destroy script, set the value to 1, When we press play, our prefab will be destroyed after one second. Let's look at how our anime's animation is achieved. We have two animations on here. One is walk animation, another is attack animation. The default animation state is the walk animation. I have created one boolean parameter called is attacked. If the is attack boolean value is true, our animation will transit from walk state to attack state. Also, uncheck the exact time because we want this transition to happen suddenly. For the transition from attack to walk, we want to complete the whole attack animations and then run the walk animations. So we have to check the exact time. Inside the anime script, we first have to get access of the animator component. Then, we declare one game object type variable called projectile. If our player is outside of the enemy attack range, our animator.setBoolean is attack to be false. Otherwise, the boolean variable value is set to true. Then, we create one function in order to instantiate the projectile game object. We can first try to put this function inside the else statements. Bend to Unity and drag this projectile as prefab. Then drag the projectile prefab inside the enemy script. When we press play, unfortunately, the result did not work out as well as expected. There are a bunch of projectiles launched from the enemy which is not what we want. Also, our enemy did not play the attack animation because we typed the wrong boolean variable name on here. It should be is attack. Actually, we can delete the short animation inside the else statements. Go to animation window. We want our projectile can launch on one certain frame. We can drag the timeline and insert the event on this frame. Press this add button. This button will add one specified event on certain frame. On inspector, you can add the short function. When we press play, our projectile looks much better now. However, our projectile is instantiated from the top position because of the pivot point. We can create one empty game object called fire point and drag this game object to the correct position. Bend to enemy script and declare the firepoint transform variable. Well, our firepoint did not turn his direction with the enemy together, which looks weird. So we cannot use the sprite render dot flip x to achieve. We can replace the flip x with the local skill dot x to complete. We can multiply by negative one to turn enemy direction as well.
When we press play, our enemy will shoot in a correct direction. Now, we start to make the health bar. Go to Sprite folder. We have laid out the sprite elements in a regular pattern. Choose to the Multiply Sprite mode and press the Sprite Edit button. We slice the sprites by using Grid by Seal Count. Select the player game object. Create one UI canvas. In many situations, we choose to the Overlayer Render mode. This render mode places UI elements on the screen render on the top of the scene. If the scene is resized or change resolution, the canvas will automatically change size to match this. In this project, we choose to the world space. In the world space render mode, canvas will behave as any other objects in the scene. Then, we can create one UI image. Select the canvas and reset the transform position to 0, 0, 0. Now you will notice that our UI image has rendered on the bottom of the screen. We can change the sorting layer order on here. Then we can use the Rect tool to resize this image. Drag the health point sprite inside the source image and press the preserve aspects which ensure image remains existing dimension. This is our health point image. Then duplicate this UI image game object. This is our health point background. Drag this background image on the top because we want him render on the bottom. Then duplicate again. This is our health point effect image. Select these two UI images. Select the image type field. The field mode is horizontal star from left. A field image will display a section of the sprite. The image dot fill amount will determine how much the image to show. You can simply drag the slider of the fill amount to check the result. In order to see clearly, we can switch to the 3D mode. We have three UI images now. When our player decreases his health point, the red health point image will decrease suddenly. Then our white image will decrease in a specified speed. When the value of the white image decreases until the value of our red health image, the white image will stop decreasing. This is the logic of the health bar. We can create another C# script called health bar. Create two new image variables called HP image an HP effect image to hold a reference to the UI image component on our UI image game object. Then we have one private flow variable called HP. This variable will keep track of our current chaos point in our game. In the beginning of the game, the current HP value is equal to his maximum HP value. Our HP image dot fill amount is equal to the current health point value divided by the maximum health point value. If the fill amount of the health point effect image is greater than the fill amount of the current health point image, we want the fill amount of health point effect image will decrease in a certain speed. We can declare one flow type variable that is called her speed. We want the health point effect image fill amount keep decreasing until these two variables have the same value. So in else statements, HP effect image dot fill amount is equal to the fill amount of the HP image. Bend to Unity and drag the health bar script inside the canvas game object. Drag the correct information on Inspector. Once the projectile touch to the player, our player health point will decrease. Go to projectile script. Inside the onTrigger enter 2D function, we have to get access of the player health bar component. Also, we have to use public access modifier to get access the variable from other script. 
Hide inspector makes a variable not show up in the inspector, but be serialized. Then to projectile script, the HP minus equals to 25. Something wrong here. We cannot get access of the health bar script because get component only returns the component of type if the game object has one attached. Health bar component has attached to his child game object instead of the player game object. So we have to use get component in children. When we press play, now we have complete our player health bar. When our player is under attack, our health bar will display in an obvious manner. We can drag this UI camera scope as prefab. Drag this new prefab under the enemy game object. You can choose to resize the UI image and change their position. We can simulate the player attack function inside the update function. When we press the spacebar, our enemy will decrease 20 points. We can use get component in children for testing. Everything looks perfect. Alright, this is the end of this video. As always, the links for the project repository is on the description below. I hope this video enhanced your experience using Hillsbar. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. If you have anything you would like to see being made on a video, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share with friends, and subscribe to my channel. There is much more to come. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.